Okay, I wanted to give you guys another example of a simple generative model that we could use to uh, analyze using a Bayesian approach. Um, you may remember we did an experiment earlier in the semester like this where we uh, used a PWM output from an Arduino to drive current through an LED and we measured the voltage at the top of a resistor at the bottom of the resistor and then we used that to get the current through the LED and of course having the voltage here we knew the voltage drop across the LED so we could get the whole IV curve of the LED. Now we used an Artemis Nano that had a, a maximum voltage measurement capability of 2 volts and so we weren't able to drive the LEDs very hard. Uh, a couple years ago I did this experiment with some students and we used a, a regular Arduino and it can drive all the way up to 5 volts so we were able to push the LEDs a lot harder and we got into a, a range where the simple model that we used that works well if you only go up to 2 volts uh, did not work that great and we had to add another term to account for the internal resistance of the LED and I want to show you using some of that data how you could do a Bayesian analysis and, and work that out. So um, so let's let's take a look at that data. So uh, I, I've imported the usual suspects here and I've got the, the LED data. You can see we're measuring the voltage at the top and the bottom of the uh, of that resistor. And so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. If we um, if I plot um, df dot count and then df dot voltage one let's put voltage one let's make that a red line uh, red dots and then also just take a quick peek at the uh, voltage two make that blue dots and just let's see what we got here uh, that didn't work uh, oh There we go. Okay, so it looks like there's something funny happening at the beginning. Um, aha, okay, I know what it is. These guys, when they, if you look at all the data, whoops, it looks like the capacitor was still discharging at the beginning, the first couple data points. They were, they were cycling this over and over again, and they just started the spreadsheet at a zero, but they had clearly had the thing up to the max before, and this is the discharge. The capacitor is still discharging here, so I I put this two to the end, and then so I should do the same thing here. Actually, let's just do this. We'll just say uh, count equals dot count. We'll just uh, V1 is same thing, except it's voltage 1. And then uh, V2, voltage 2. And then we'll make this, okay, and then we'll uh, make this count comma V1. Make this count comma v2. Still doesn't like that. Uh, what's the problem here? Mm -hmm. There we go. That cleans up that beginning. Okay. So the e the region I'm interested in is here where the in this region where there's some current flowing. So that's like from 90 to uh, what? Let's get a grid on here so we can see. So I'm going to guess 170. So let's uh, do this begin. Actually, let's just do it this way. We'll say begin equals 90 end equals 170 and then we'll make this 90 uh, no begin end begin end begin end 
That's looking better. We could go a little earlier than that because it's already a good. Let's make it 80. And see what that looks like. That's too small. So 85. I want to make sure the current is positive. We got, uh, you know, because we're potentially going to be taking the natural log here. I don't want to end up with um, problems with that. So uh, let's calculate the current. The current is going to be V2. Uh, V1 minus V2 over R. Oh, it's what R? Uh, these guys used a 390 ohm resistance. So, um, and the idea is, if you remember the model, it says that the current is equal to I0 times E to the uh, Q times V divided by eta times KB times T, and uh, I'll go ahead and put that in parentheses. This is just a comment, f you know, to remember how the model went. So if we took the log of both sides, we'd expect the voltage to go like the log of the current. So if I were to plot um, <coughs> the log of the current versus the voltage, uh, the voltage across the diode, that's going to be V2. I would expect that to be a straight line, but you'll notice it really isn't a straight line, right? It's some kind of curvy thing. And if I try to fit that to a straight line, it's not going to work that great because, um, excuse me, uh, I mean, we can try it. Uh, if I say, uh, M comma B comma cov equals NP dot polyfit uh, NP dot log of I uh, V2 1 and then um, COV equals true. Okay, that's a nice linear fit. We've done this enough that you guys know how that works. Um, let's go ahead and see what the uh, I theoretical is going to be, or no, V theoretical. V theoretical is going to be M times NP log I plus B. And let's also make a plot of that. So it's going to be NP log I versus uh, v, theoretic, v theoretical. And let's make that a red line. And you'll see... Oh, right. Oh, that's horrible. Hang on, what did I do wrong here? V theoretical. Is that right? Hang on, something very fishy here. Um, oh, this should be V2. There we go. Okay, so the point is, uh, that's not a great fit, right? Because it's it's clearly, th this is not a straight line, it's a curve. How are we going to fix that? Well, the thing is, uh, you, need to, you need to add a term. It, v is going to be equal to uh, something NP log I, but there's also going to be a term um, that's proportional to I itself with a different constant of proportionality. So the correct model... So what we have here is V is equal to A times, or M times NP dot log I plus some offset plus I times R, where this, or this little r, R equals the internal resistance of the diode, right? There's a, there's a, There's the voltage across the junction of the diode that's given by the Shockley equation, and that's the M here. <coughs> um, B has to do with the I0, that's the uh, reverse leakage current from the Shockley equation. But the Shockley equation just talks about the IV relationship of the junction. It doesn't include any internal resistance of the diode itself, the connectors and the material of the diode that's not part of the junction. So uh, how are we going to add that? Well, I would propose that a simple, a nice 
way of doing it is to use Bayesian inference, cook up a generative model, and uh, and then uh, test it and run it with the data. So let's let's do that. Okay, so let's make another model for <coughs> PM dot model as diode model. And what are our parameters? We have uh, M, which is the slope of the straight line. Uh, this is the the voltage versus the log of the current. And so I'm looking at that right now. Um, you can see that, well, when the... Uh, actually, let's do this. Let's put a grid on here so we can just have an order of magnitude what we're looking at. <clears throat> it goes from negative 8 to negative 6, so that's a change of 2 horizontally, and vertically it's going up, um, let's say, between uh, a little less than 1.6 to almost 1.75, a little less than 1.75, so that's 0 0.15, 0 0.15 in 2, so that's going to be 0 0.08, something like that. So let's make it, uh, obviously that's somewhere between zero and a half. You know, that would be a huge range. <clears throat> so um, let's go ahead and make it, uh, let's use a different distribution this time just for fun. We'll make it a half Cauchy. That'll give us lots of, lots of wiggle room. Um, and I'm going to make this uh, 0 0.5. Okay, we know it's really 0 0.08 is roughly what it looks like, but uh, this will give us lots of slop. So if when we add that resistive term, it could change, and we don't really know which way it's going to change. Although I'm guessing it's going to come down, not go up. But um, but let's just let it, let's give it that latitude so that the Bayesian engine can can go wherever it needs to go. The nice thing about a half Cauchy is or Cauchy is it's uh, it has lots of uh, room in the tail, so if it even has to go up to two or three, it could get there. So I'm not I'm not cutting anything off. I'm just giving it a hint. It's somewhere between zero and 0 0.5, but uh, but it could go above 0 0.5, substantially above 0 0.5. Um, what about B? Um, that's harder to say. Let's find out what M and B were up here. Um, B was around two, so let's uh, let's do another half Cauchy. Um, let's give it lots of lots of wiggle room. Um, how about four? We'll double that. And remember, the half Cauchy goes out beyond. If you look at um, if you look at what it looks like, right? Um, Let's see. Cauchy, uh, we're setting the gamma. So when gamma is equal to 2, that's this blue line. So even if you set it to 2, it goes way out past the 2. So <clears throat> anyway, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. That's what I want. OK. So uh, it, 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 that allows us to go out past the 4 if we have to. What about R? I don't really know what to think about R. Um, I, let's do another half Cauchy on this one. But uh, to make sure we don't, I mean, I don't think it's going to be that big, but uh, let's give it a 10. That'll give it plenty of room. We, I expect it's going to be less than 10. But the, even if it turned out to be 20, the half Cauchy doesn't block us off from that. So that's the three main parameters of the model. But of course, we need the noise. <clears throat> so again, I don't know what to expect for that. It looks like, in, in terms of volts, the noise is something like, um, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. So it's like 10 millivolts or something like that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make that. Um, Let's say point, uh, that's 10 millivolts. Let's make it 20 millivolts. Okay, that'll be, and again, that's plenty. 
Okay, so those are our priors. Then, of course, what do we observe? We observe the voltage. So I'm going to say V observed is a normal. Mu is going to be the output of our model. So V model equals M times the log of I plus B plus R times I plus N. Okay? And uh, interesting, ah, no, not N. We're going to do it this way. Mu is going to be V model. N is the, from the normal distribution of, the s of sampling. So here's where the N comes in. It's going to be the standard deviation of the normally distributed noise in the measurement. <coughs> and then... Uh, observed equals and then that's what we actually observe and that's from our data and that's uh, we call that v2 so that's v2 and then I just need to sample and I'm going to return inference data it's going to be true okay Okay, so that finally finished. A couple things I did notice uh, while it was running. I, I forgot to assign the output of the sample function to a variable. I'm going to call it trace, as usual. I bumped up the number of samples and I bumped up the number of tuning steps in order to improve the, um, improve the behavior of the sampler. It was complaining to me that I, I didn't have enough tuning, and so I just followed what it said, and there still were some issues but it seems like it it turned out more or less okay let's we won't know until we do the posterior check so let's uh, let's just see um, I'm gonna go ahead and print the um, summary and we'll just look at the stats and then let's do a uh, plot of the trace and see what the see what the output looks like so um, it looks like uh, M is, is clearly not zero. It's pretty well defined. B, again, uh, is about what it was before, roughly. But I want you to notice here that, uh, where is it, R. R is a lot bigger than I was expecting. And it looks like the, the, uh, the sampler got kind of stuck a couple of times during the, the uh, exploration of the parameter space um, I think these are the these little black lines I think are the divergences but anyway um, it doesn't look totally crazy it doesn't look totally crazy let's see what the posterior um, check looks like okay so let's do that uh, predictive posterior check I want to say with diode model we're going to call um, pm dot sample posterior predictive, and we're going to pass in um, the trace, and we're going to call, set var names equal to the variable names we want to get from the posterior. So we're going to get m and b and r, and then I also want to get v observed. Okay, let's do that. It's going to run for a second. Okay, so now let's uh, let's go ahead and look at the shape of one of these guys. It's uh, just twelve thousand numbers for M. B and R are going to be the same way, but what about V observed? So PPC V observed dot shape. Okay, it's 12,000 by 85, and that's because there are 85 data points in this set. So what that means is, um, <clears throat> and that V observed includes the noise. Okay, it includes the noise. So, um, so let's do this. Uh, for J in range, one comma, let's do, let's do 100. Um, what I want to do is to plot the uh, data, and then I also want to plot the 
output of the posterior uh, parameters, the posterior parameter distribution, what the model says. So uh, V theoretical is going to be uh, it's going to be PPC M sub J, right? That's the value of M times uh, NP dot log of I plus PPC B, that's the B value sub J, the, the Jth sample, right, of B, um, and then plus PPC R sub j times i. Okay, that's going to be the theoretical voltage. And then, so what I want to do is to make a plot of that, PLT plot. Um, it's going to be NP log of i, and then V theoretical is on the vertical. And let's make those green lines. Uh, but we want to make that a pretty th thin alpha because, um, well, actually, those don't, those look all about the same. So um, it's looking pretty constrained. Let's go ahead and plot the data on that same graph. Um, and then this is going to be V2, right? And we'll make these blue dots as usual. And you can see that is just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so the the model agrees with the data almost perfectly. It's uh, you know exact alignment. Let's go ahead and include the noise and see what that looks like in the prior or in the in the posterior. So rather than um, rather than plotting this model, I'm not going to calculate the theoretical anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and use the observed from the posterior. So that's uh, PPC V observed uh, sub J. And then let's make this uh, blue. Uh, no, uh, red. Okay, and that includes the noise figure. So uh, really, it's it's looking great. So that is fantastic. That means we have we've really pretty much narrowed down the parameters. Um, PLT dot grid. PLT dot um, x label. That's going to be uh, the log of the current. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's spelled label like that. Y label is the voltage of the diode, right? Uh, we can give it a title. This is LED VI behavior. Mm -hmm. Looks gorgeous. And then let's go ahead and give these guys um, a legend. PLT plot. Let's go ahead and use the zeroth one. Uh, for V theoretical, I left out the zeroth, the zero J. So I'll go ahead and plot that one. And uh, we'll call that, make this zero. Make this guy zero. Make this guy zero. And let's plot that with a little a little more oomph, okay? A real green line. And then uh, I'll go ahead and do the same with this one. Make this zero. Give this a little more oomph. Okay. And then I'll give this one the label. Uh, that's going to be theory. No, that's not what I mean. Uh, model, no noise. 
this is going to be label model with noise and this is going to be actual data and then put a legend okay gorgeous all right and uh, what else do we need here I guess that that's probably good enough for now so that gives you a good idea of how you can pull out that posterior from the posterior distribution you pull out those parameters and you look at what the uh, what the model looks like you've got graphs that show you the distribution of M's from the posterior the distribution of B's the distribution of R's if you have to quote a value of R you're gonna say it's uh, somewhere between 19.56 and 24.02 your best estimate is 21.8 I'd say for the resistance and then for the slope and the intercept of course you can use these guys so I hope that helps that's that's how you do it that that's a so what do we do we created a generative model uh, here's the actual data this is the failure of the fit okay um, then we used a oh actually we didn't actually do a generative model here did we we just went ahead and analyzed the data um, but you could clearly create a generative model um, actually let's just do that real quick so um, I can use the same eyes but I could simply say um, V gen is going to be um, what should I do I'm going to steal this is sort of cheating in a generative model but I'm going to grab these just to remind myself uh, we'll do markdown okay and then um, so let's just shoot for near there 0 0.05 B will be 2 R will be 22 and will be 0 0.01 okay now th that's not right but the point is it's it's in the neighborhood so I'll just generate V gen what's it gonna be it's gonna be um, M times the log of I plus B plus R times I plus NP dot normal what do we have to do we just have to add a little bit of noise right so um, it's gonna be scale equals N size equals the length of I like that and then we can um, plot np log i versus v gen blue dots uh, okay oh it's input random okay so that's my generative model um, v gen so how do I test it I can simply grab this guy everything's exactly the same except this is now a generative model and instead of v2 I'm gonna put in here v gen I'm gonna just train it on the generated data and I'm gonna dial down the sampling because I want to wait forever so I'll say tune 500 okay
okay? And it complained a little bit like the other one complained, but I'm not going to fix it because this is just a, you know, it's just a generative model. But we can see uh, az dot summary trace uh, kind equals stats, and then az dot plot trace. So this for our generative model, and look, it came out. Let's see, how did I start with? I said m was 0.05, b was 2, r was 22, and what did I pull out? 0.05 to close to 22, but lots of variation, right? So it was between 15 and 26. So we, we don't have a very good idea of what r is, but we know it's not zero, right? It's got to be something. And uh, the divergences, it looks very similar to that, the real data. But the point is, you can you can have some confidence that you can extract meaningful parameters, and and it's okay. So that just gives us more confidence in the actual parameters we extracted from the actual data, as if the the fit that we see wasn't evidence enough. Okay, that's that's the idea. I hope that helps. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.